In today's podcast, I look at the Scottish ballad Clerk Saunders. I'll show just what is known about the ballad and note its publishing history. I will sing two samples of the known tunes and end on a full performance of the ballad. So sad and vain he was the night As I did rain from town to town Clerk Saunders and his gay lady were walking in the field so brown. Oh, a bed, a bed, Clerk Saunders said, a bed, a bed for you and me. There's never one, said the gay lady, until we both to married be. For I have seven brothers bold, Unto you they bear no good will, And if they catch you in my bower, They would value not your blood to spill. Love then take a napkin in your hand, And hold it up before your eyes, That you might swear and save your oath, that you saw not Sandy here this night. And you'll take me up into your arms, carry me unto your bed, that you might swear and save your oath, that your bow was Sandy ne'er did tread. But they were scarcely gone to bed, nor scarcely fallen fast asleep, when in and came her seven brothers, and all the torches burning bright. That tune was noted by George Kinlock and printed in his 1827 collection, Ancient Scottish Ballads. Clerk Saunders and May Margaret have been courting for some time, the intent to marry. One day they urged to stay the night together, overcomes their sense of caution. Margaret is frightened that if her seven brothers know about the intimacy, they will kill Saunders. In the middle of the night, her brothers look in her bedchamber and find them together and asleep. After some discussion, one of the brothers stabs Saunders three times. They leave him to be found by Margaret in the morning. This ballad seems to have drifted out of the repertoires of the Scottish country singers by the late 1800s. It was unknown in England, Ireland, and didn't travel to America. What we have are seven sets of words and three tunes, noted in the late 1700s and early 1800s. The earliest noting of Clerk Saunders are in two original manuscripts from the 1770s, held in the David Hurd collection. One of the manuscripts expands the story to describe the return of Saunders as a ghost. The ballad was first published in 1802 in Volume 2 of The Minstrelsy of the Scottish Borders, edited by Sir Walter Scott. Scott said that he took the main elements from the two 1770 manuscripts held by David Hurd. He reworked the ballad to give it a better form. He retained the ghostly visit as used in one of the Hurd manuscripts, incorporating verses from the ballad Sweet William's Ghost. The Hurd manuscripts were reprinted in the English and Scottish popular ballads, edited by Francis James Child and his team from the Harvard College. Child did not feel that the ghostly visit was part of the original narrative, and left out those verses when reproducing the heard manuscripts. Versions of the ballad with a tune were printed in 1827, in both Ancient Scottish Ballads, edited by George Kinlock, and Minstrelsy, Ancient and Modern, edited by William Motherwell. I'm using the Kinlock tune and words within this podcast to illustrate the action of the ballad. The Motherwell tune and words I will sing in full at the end of this podcast. The third tune is from William Christie, published in his 1881 collection Traditional Ballad Airs, under the title of Clerk Sandy, and stated as learned by his father from singers in the Buchan area of Scotland. The text noted by Christie was borrowed from the latter part of the text noted by David Buchan and begins after the action of the main ballad. The text starts with Margaret's father offering to find a husband who is a higher match than Sandy's son could ever be, similar to a verse used in the Braes of Yarrow. 
it then moves into the ghostly visit narrative. I feel that this version does not link up to the text of the Clerk Saunders ballad. Nor do I feel that Christie's tune is comfortable with the text that he's chosen to add to it. Therefore, although I'm mentioning the Christie version, I'm not going to sing it. Within the ballad, there's a conversation between the seven brothers regarding what they should do on finding Mayor Margaret in bed with Clerk Saunders. This conversation is in most of the collected versions. Most of the brothers are in favour of leaving the lovers and walking away, but one brother draws his sword and kills Clerk Saunders. Then up spoke the foremost brother, I know they have been lovers dear. Then up and spoke the second brother, They've been in love for many's the year. And up and spoke the faith of them, I vow they'll ne'er be twain by me. And up and spoke the sixth of them, We'll take our leave and go our way. But up and spoke the seventh brother, I vow an ill death he may die. For I wear the sharp sword at my side, That soon shall make Clerk Sandy die. And he's drawn out that nut-brown sword, He's drawn it three times through the straw, And in Clerk Saunders' body fair, That tempered steel went through and through. Clerk Saunders, in its simplest form, ends with May Margaret vowing to hide herself away. And she's turned the blanket to the foot, And there she saw his bloody wounds. Oh, cursed be my brothers bold, I vow an ill death they might die. And I will do for my love's sake, what many a lady would not do, For seven long years shall come and go, Ere I were stocking, or I were shoe. There's ne'er a shirt go on my back, And ne'er a comb go in my hair, And ne'er a coal or candlelight, She'll shine into my bower evermore. This lament is found in other ballads such as the Lowlands of Holland. There are no records of Clerk Saunders being collected in the 20th century, and it's puzzling why this fine song died out from the repertoire of the Scottish singers. There are some fine performances using the printed versions from more contemporary singers that are well worth hearing. I will end this podcast with a full version of the tune collected by William Motherwell and printed in 1827 in his collection Minstrelsy, Ancient and Modern. Clerk Saunders and May Margaret were walking in the garden green and sad and heavy was the love that fell these two lovers between. A bed, a bed, Clerk Saunders said, A bed, my love, for you and me. Never a one, the lady said, Until the day we married be. For I have seven bold brothers, And they are all valiant men. And if they knew you tread my bower, Your life should not go long. Or you'll take me up all in your arms, And lay me low down on your bed, That ye may swear and keep your oath, Your bower floor I did not tread. And tie a handkerchief around your face, and you must tie it wondrous keen, That you may swear and keep your oath, You did not see me since late yestreen. But they were scarcely gone to bed, Nor scarce had fallen fast asleep, 
When in and came her seven brothers To stand at clerk Saunders' feet. Then up and spoke the first brother, Oh, but love be wondrous keen. And up and spoke the second brother, It's an ill thing to kill a sleeping man. Then up and spoke the next of them, I think they have been lovers dear. And up and spoke the next of them, They've been in love this many's a year. But up and spoke the fifth brother, Although there were no man but me, I bear the brand into my hand, Shall quickly this clerk Saunders die. He's taken out a bright long brand, And striped it three times through the straw, Between clerk Saunders' ribs and side, He made the rusty rapier go. Awake, awake, clerk Saunders, she said, Awake, awake, for sin and shame, For the sheets are damp with sweat, And I'm afraid we will be found. I dreamed a dreary dream last night, I wish it may be for our good, That I was cutting my yellow hair, And dipping it in welts of blood. She turned the blanket to the foot, And let it fall on to the floor, And there she's seen his bloody wounds, And tears down her face did flow. It's I will do for my love's sake What many ladies would not do Seven years shall come and go Before I wear stocking or shoe They'll never coat go on my back They'll never comb go through my hair They'll neither call nor candlelight Shall shine in my bower evermore.